Hey friends, it's Eric Thor here, and a lot of you ask me what you can do in order to better use and utilize the inferior function. And in this video, I'm going to show you some easy tricks that are going to make the inferior function a lot more comfortable to use and a lot more fun. Now, a lot of you say that you have issues with developing and using your inferior function. It's perceived as stressful, difficult, and demanding. But it can be actually quite fun if you do it the right way. Here are five quick tricks that I use to better use my inferior function. And these are also tricks that you can use to enjoy this function a lot more. First of all, the 80-20 principle. What you want to allow yourself to do is you want to allow yourself to use your dominant function 80% of the time and your inferior function 20% of the time. Why do you want to use your dominant function so much? Well, first of all, because your dominant function propels you forward, gives you energy and keeps you motivated. And when you use your dominant function enough, you get a lot of energy. So you get really pumped up and you get really passionate and you get really strong into yourself. So if you can use your dominant function 80% of the time, you'll have a lot of energy and a lot of motivation that you can then use to better activate and use your inferior function. So what you want to do is after you've engaged in your dominant function enough to build up energy, steam and motivation, then you want to take this energy and you want to convert it into your inferior function. So use it in a way that will convert it to introverted or inferior function energy. Lower the pressure. A lot of the reason why we kill ourselves on the inferior function is because we put the pressure too high. Don't expect yourself to be as good or as talented at your inferior function as you are at your dominant function. And be more forgiving of yourself when you make mistakes with this function. That means lower the stakes and make it easier. Actually, what I've found is the inferior function can be quite enjoyable as long as we appropriately challenge this function. And that means be realistic in what you can expect from yourself. Don't expect yourself to go from an ENFP traveler and adventurer to an ISTJ paper tosser. You know, don't expect yourself to go from being jumping from routine to change to change to suddenly being super routine oriented and super dependable. Find realistic ways to challenge this function and lower the challenge to a way that it feels feasible and accomplishable. What a lot of people do, which really screws over the inferior function, is they make it too difficult. They say and they expect themselves to be super amazing at this function. And what happens when you're faced with immense pressure and challenge is you automatically give up. Your brain gives up as soon as its challenge on this task is too high. Allow yourself to go from dominant flow to inferior stress. And that means change interchangeably between these two states and allow yourself to move between them. What I want you to do is I want you to first and foremost recognize that the more you use your dominant function, the more you're going to want to use your inferior function. This is known as the pendulum effect. The pendulum effect means that you move to one side and because you moved so much to one side, you're going to want to move to the other side. So the more you go into your dominant function, the more you're going to experience a need to go back to the inferior function. And the reason for this is to balance yourself out. For example, imagine that you are a person that uh, is very good at honoring and going into and analyzing your own feelings. The better you know yourself, the more you're going to want to go out into the world and apply your judgment and your values in the real world. And so if you can give up, develop strong inner motivation, you're going to experience a stronger need to go into uh, your inferior function to balance out this process. Use your eight function as a tool. So for example, if your inferior function is extroverted thinking, you want to use introverted thinking as a toolkit to fuel this function and to push it in the right way. So what I've found is, for example, uh, every function is fueled by its unconscious opposite. So the unconscious opposite of introverted feeling is extroverted feeling and the unconscious opposite of extroverted sensing is introverted sensing. So what that means is if you can use this function or if you can have this function as a toolkit, you can bounce against this function and you'll have more steam and more energy to do so. For example, an extroverted sensory type will have a lot more steam to use extroverted sensing if they have introverted sensing 
to establish organization and structure in a quick and easy way for them. So for example, if you want to use expert thinking a lot, you want to have a problem-free environment, and you want to have a toolkit to make sure that you stay efficient and that you stay on track and that you can be optimal in the use of this function. Don't be afraid to ask friends to provide a role for you that allows you to be more productive. And that means, for example, if you can find an INTP or an ISTP to give you introverted thinking, that will help you use extroverted thinking better. The more you spend time with these unconscious opposite types, the more energy you'll have at your inferior function. These types naturally motivate you to do things that you normally not want to do. Advice number five, build stress resilience. So the biggest trait that allows you to use your inferior function a lot is stress resilience. That means the capacity to endure difficulty and challenge without becoming scared or without backing out. The more you use your inferior function, the more stress resilient you'll become. And the more appropriate your level of challenge that you set for yourself, the more easy it will be to stay resilient and to stay strong and to stay confident, even if you're outside your comfort zone. Using the inferior function naturally takes you out of your comfort zone, which is why it's so easy to give up. But if you're capable of being uncomfortable, and if you've learned that you can stay uncomfortable for a longer time and still come out okay, stress resilience is in essence proof of competence. That means if you feel and have proof that you can use this function, even for smaller things, even at a smaller degree and to a semi-competent level, you'll have a lot more stress resilience. So the better you get at this function, the more resilient you'll feel at it and the more enjoyable it starts to feel too. There are many reasons to develop the inferior function, but never let it take control of your life. Make sure that you always check in with your dominant function so that you stay on track with your core goals and values in life. You have to feel like you're moving and making progress on your own goal and your own destination. Try not to do things too much for other people and try to tune in and do things for yourself as much as possible. If you can remind yourself of why you do things and why things matter, it's going to be a lot easier to use the inferior function. If you do the inferior function simply to please other people and to make other people happy, that's not gonna get you very far. Now I wonder, what is your inferior function and how do you develop this function and what help do you need with developing your current function? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below and otherwise I hope to see you all in the next video.